Welcome everybody, this is Denny and Carl with Get Wisdom and today we're going to continue with the channeling series and this is uh, among a uh, special channeling series that we do from time to time called Viewer Questions for Creator. So today uh, I, have a, I have a list of uh, seven questions that are from our viewers who have seen the series and they submitted these questions to us on, on our website getwisdom.com uh, specifically for this purpose. So I'll be asking the question Carl will be channeling Creator, and we'll get the question answered directly from Creator. So we have quite a variety of questions here. I think it'll be a, a, of great interest to, to people who are new to the uh, channeling series and to uh, those, of, uh, those, of you, those of our viewers who've been following this for a while. And I mentioned in one of our uh, more recent uh, uh, channeling uh, videos that we did that we, Carl and I just celebrated a two-year anniversary, which was on... February 15th. So we started all this with uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. I think it was on February 15th, 2017. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us and thank, and thank you especially, Carl, for doing the, these series with us today. Well, you're very welcome. And uh, I return the thanks to you and all your efforts here on behalf of the enterprise and all the people watching, because you are who we do this for primarily. We can indulge ourselves in private quite readily, but to take the trouble to do an outreach is what it's all about for us, because we, we want to help the world and help bring light in to illuminate the dark corners. And people have all kinds of interests, so it ends up, poking into a lot of different loose ends and knowledge, mysteries that people have pondered over and over and over and still remain mysteries. And some of these are deserving of a look-see because they can teach us something. So I never know what to expect when I go to Creator. I may have some intuitive inklings about something but this can change over time. And this is one of the things people may not appreciate about channeling, that you will get information proportional to who you are in the moment as you do the outreach in making the request. So if I know nothing about the, even the basis for posing a question, I will get a very limited answer because it has to be a fit for who I am. Even though there's a questioner out there who wants this knowledge, if I am ignorant, that knowledge base the questioner has gets narrowed down, filtering through me. And now the divine realm can only give a Carl-sized answer. <laughs> so if I fall short in someone's view, that may be the reason why. Yeah. So there's an art to this and a science as well. <clears throat> and it and behooves people who write questions to help educate me a little so we're clear on exactly yeah. the kind of thing they're thinking and yeah i'm i'm glad you brought this up cuz it, it's kind of like a we're kind of like explaining the refinement that's underway and we actually encountered a question that needed to be split up because it was long and it had multiple parts and 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 just you know just so people know i'm actually going to attempt to go back and find out who submitted the question so we can get some a background on it so we can get a better appraisal of what they had in mind with the various parts of the question and then with that if we're successful we will put that back into the hopper for a future session where we do viewer questions for creator so this is a refinement that's underway so that we can um, you know meet the needs of the mission as well as the needs of the people who are taking the time to submit the questions in the first place Yes, and, and so this, this is a basic phenomenon that's true for all authentic channelings. By authentic, I mean by true light beings. Most channelings are not. They are retrieving information from imposters, lower-level beings who step in and pretend to be archangels or 
ascended masters or whomever. And, you know, that's a long story and very unfortunate, but a divine level being must follow a number of rules to not exceed the reach of the questioner who is reaching out to them, that person directly. So if I know nothing about a certain type of difficulty that's going on, even though it might be of huge and earth-shaking implication, they can't talk about it because I don't know anything about it, never thought of it, never conceived of it. They must wait until I have an inkling. You know, there's more to this. You know, there's there's some kind of dark doings that are beyond what I'm aware can happen. You know, and what is going on and who is behind this? And how is it being carried out and, and so on. And, and until I reach that level of understanding, it just will be held back. It has to be that way to not lead me along right. by jumping in front and giving me new things that, that um, in a sense, I haven't grown to need personally and to be aware of and justify sharing more detail. All right. So I know that's kind of a vague uh, concept, but uh, <clears throat> one, one example I can give that, uh, you know, I may jump ahead of a bunch of people out there, but uh, looking at the problem of good and evil for years, which I've done as a channeler, it was quite a long while before I began to appreciate the role of the dark extraterrestrials and things. And until I posed the question and started to probe it, it was never mentioned, even though it was a much larger component many times in the things I was asking about. Yeah. And, you know, so evil is evil. And, you know, you can have an evil actor doing evil things. It's very obvious on its face. Someone gets a arrested, they shoot up a school or something. And there may be dark spirits that darken that person. But there could also be an extra layer of extraterrestrial control yeah. orchestrating that, even through the dark spirits. So this, this is very, very bizarre for many people. I get it. It took me a long time to even pose those kinds of questions because yeah. it was so far out. It was and, just And you had universe. to pose those questions to get that answer. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't just something that was going to peek its head around the corner for you at some opportune moment. The, the question had to be specific and targeted. So yeah. Yeah, it's a good example for what we're dealing with here um, and how, how potentially there could be some surprises depending on the circumstance. So right. uh, perhaps with and, that. And wait, wait, the other thing, okay. other th just to finish a thought because I, I, I want to convey this for folks. By the same token, in already apologizing in advance for a shortfall, <laughs> I, I can tell you that this is an incremental process for the reasons we've been discussing. And we're not necessarily done with these topics. So when we ask a question, that's not the be all and end all of information potentially that right. we could tap into. Right. But it may require an incremental working at it a bit. Yes. And so in that connection, if you hear something that you're passionate about and feel unsatisfied, feel free to submit a follow-up question. Yeah, good point. And make clear, you know, what was it you felt was missing? Yeah, and that's something I would like to do in the channeling series itself because we've got, um, you know, some earlier uh, subjects that we, that we did channelings on, you know, one that I've already mentioned is Dwight D. Eisenhower. But well, we've learned a lot since that channeling with him. You know, a lot came up. And so we could go back, look at the questions that we asked, look at the answers that we got, and give that another study, and then develop some follow-up questions that we could do with that specific person who, like you say, had skin in the game and might have something really uh, yes. relevant to say. So there's no there's no end to the... To the uh, 
potential for content here. It's it's it is it's endless. Um, so with that, perhaps maybe we we should go ahead and get started. Okay. What do you think? Sounds good. Okay. So I'll just need a couple of minutes to get in the right state of consciousness to make the connection. I put safety around the work and I go through creator to channel anyone else. So I do the same to connect to creator directly. <clears throat> and I have creator make the connection to ensure that it is accurate and protected. And this, this is quite important and it is something you know it's probably worth mentioning that happens with prayer if you pray to the Almighty that communication will be protected from outside interference nothing else is protected you get that automatically it's divine grace but if you don't believe fully if you don't believe in your worthiness to get an answer there can be some difficulties and there may be room for an imposter to jump in. This is regrettable, but it's no different than any other aspect of life. We need to look at our own situation and plan for our own safety. And it's no different than our physical safety. So um, just want to make that small point. So then creator will let you know when it's here on board and ready for the next uh, question. Okay, thank you. This is Source Creator speaking. Thank you for joining us. Is the story of Ezekiel's wheel in the Bible true, and who were the beings that emerged from it? This is a true story. It is one of divine revelation. The beings were angelic. This was a divine manifestation through a divine prophet. And this was a major gifting of divine blessing to witness directly the divine realm in action. It is often interpreted in other ways as mass hysteria as delusional thinking and these are quite deliberate misinterpretations and a fostering of disinformation that has happened again and again and again with reference to the scriptures and the many accounts of miracles and the intuitive understanding of things that seems so improbable to the ears of listeners in today's world based on materialism with a denial of the role of higher consciousness in life itself and in the interaction with divine realm that goes on regardless of human awareness or disinterest there are always some believers that keeps the enterprise going. You need to thank these folks for keeping the divine realm attuned to you and supporting your efforts. That is never guaranteed. It is a function of your desire and willingness to take part in things. Ezekiel was an advanced being with advanced awareness and was yearning for communion with the divine realm. And he received it in a dramatic fashion. That is why it registered so strongly on human consciousness and has been reinforced again by divine realm to maintain believability through all the ages since. This is the reason why the Bible still survives and is still revered and regarded as something blessed, something quite special, and something divine 
in its inception and in its teachings. It is not because of the words on the page so much as a divine energy that follows it wherever it might go and to whomever hands pick up the Bible and begin to read. Any openness and desire to learn will be rewarded by a divine outreach from us directly. This people do not appreciate in thinking of the words of the scriptures as archaic and long out of date. In this way, it is a living document, a living conduit between human beings in the physical realm and creator in the light. We share your lives with you. We are inside of you with our energy, perceiving everything that happens to everyone simultaneously. So why would we not be present as you might read a biblical passage? This is what makes it special and keeps it special and keeps people believing, if only faintly, after many, many centuries. So this is an important discussion and illustrates the gap between a divine revelation visible to the eye and the other senses with all that pretends and someone simply reading about the event long after it occurs, but coming away with a sense of wonderment and how amazing this must have been and being stirred a bit within with an air of excitement, if a bit of mystery as well, because the conscious perception will hold back naturally. This is your free will in action. We do not craft zombies to follow us. We allow disbelief. We allow total disbelief. And there are many among you who have reached that extreme of rejection and denial. These individuals, we must leave alone. They will never find solace or meaning in the Bible because they have pushed us away. We cannot give them the same blessing of deeper understanding and awareness. So we would say this is the highest and best meaning one could take away from the story of Ezekiel. There are many ways to bridge the gap between you and the Almighty. It only takes a thought coming from you to have the gap bridged. Your ability to perceive our response will vary and will depend on your readiness, your openness, your level of belief in us and in yourself that can be cultivated and enhanced. If you are rusty doing prayer work, that does not mean all is lost. You can make up for lost time by launching in again and making a habit and a practice of this because what that does is to invite a greater divine presence in your day. 
This can bring many, many blessings. You may not see angels appear at your birthday party, but the angels will be all around you, even though your eye fails to see them. That is good enough because you will be blessed with more love, more support, and a measure of protection as well, because that comes with the assignment. When you summon divine presence, you will benefit from the divine presence in some way. That is the take home message that all can be Ezekiel, each in their own way, each to their own degree, and each for their own benefit. All can reach to the divine and be answered and will not be turned away. Okay, thank you. Who are the beings that interacted with the Dogons in Africa? This is a two-level interaction. There were wise leaders who were highly intuitive and had a very keen appreciation of life beyond the human plane. There were seeds planted from this awareness and teachings that star beings exist, other worlds exist, and it was natural for them to look to Sirius as such a bright blazing star in the heavens as a logical origin for such life. This became part of their lore in understanding things and was passed down through multiple generations. The wonders of the heaven have entranced humanity all through time. That is encouraged by the divine realm to happen. It is always attributed to idle curiosity that people are drawn to everything and wish to understand it more. If you think about this logically, why should the heavens hold more fascination than the many more spectacular things inhabiting the earth itself, the myriad life forms, the bountiful beauty at all levels? The stars are mere points of light amid the darkness. And while naturally beautiful and intriguing because they are always beyond reach, so are the clouds. Yet the fascination captivates. There is a twofold explanation for this. One is that all appreciation of natural beauty is divine. It is a reflection of the divinity from within the being, as all are extensions of the divine to begin with. It is also a reflection of divine outreach to reward introspection 
And the reflecting on nature and its meaning, that in its way is a divine outreach. And as the creator of nature and the universe entirely, we are the recipient of those thoughts. And this constitutes an invitation. Much as Ezekiel was wanting a heavenly visit, this may be less fully formed by a stargazer, but yet there is an inner yearning to understand and to connect. This is a natural inner impulse from a larger inner awareness that much exists beyond the earth plane itself. You all knew this before coming into life and all through history knew this as well. It is not held in conscious awareness because of a disconnection from the past, but there is an intuitive link to it regardless. That can be rewarded by a divine response to tickle the senses in a sense and to reward the active curiosity with an inner positive feeling, a glowing feeling of sheer delight. This is how people come to hold views about the relative importance of things. This is why a beautiful sunset or a sunrise holds such fascination. It is because of the divine participation that it holds the true glory within the heart in the witnessing. You do not see the animals lining up to watch the sunset. They have other things to attend to. That higher awareness is innate within the human being, but it is the link to the divine on display. So the Dogon people were very in tune with nature without a full appreciation of its origins other than knowing it came from somewhere beyond themselves. And in awareness of other life elsewhere, they carried this down through the ages. And as happens worldwide, they were visited by extraterrestrials along the way who interacted with them. And in sharing their awareness of this magnificent star and its source of life, this, the extraterrestrials reaffirmed for them. These were not the loftiest of extraterrestrials who were in attendance. They were intruders in the human realm and were simply whiling away the opportunity to plant further seeds of their existence and importance and shared with them the astronomical knowledge, some of which has been retained with fair accuracy. This was simply a way of showing off their prowess and viewed as harmless being of no 
direct value to these earthlings other than to cement the stature of the alien visitors in their thinking. People look again and again for evidence of lofty extraterrestrials assisting humanity, but the influences are minimal. They are real, but they are done from a distance and not directly. And that is because of the rules of engagement for them, that the earth itself and all inhabitants, as well as all the life forms, are a special incubator. And the enterprise as a whole is to cultivate the divine human and provide a training ground for growth and enlightenment in spite of obstacles all too frequently encountered. This outside interference has been for the most part uniformly harmful. The episode we speak of here in sharing some basic knowledge is one of a small number of exceptions. There have been sharings of a number of organizational principles, tactical concepts, and technological understandings of manipulating things like building materials. Creating water distribution systems, concepts for government and commerce to streamline things, transportation enhancement, and so forth that have come from alien hands and minds but not to serve human, to help humans to serve the aliens. Your mythology has it backwards. And that is the case with these African people. They view the encounter with wonderment and then we're left alone because they were of little interest to the extraterrestrials themselves. The knowledge and information has persisted to this day. It was not leaked by outside visitors as skeptics readily assume But keep in mind, skeptics always assume there is a prosaic explanation. And were that prosaic explanation true, would satisfy the curious. But most times, that prosaic explanation is the imposition of an assumption in lieu of real information and data simply because of a refusal to believe something more extraordinary. This is a characteristic of manipulation of minds. And this is done routinely across the board with regard to all subjects that are not promoted 
by the Dark Extraterrestrial Alliance. That is why so many minds are closed on so many fronts. Human beings are curious creatures designed to learn and grow. And the more unusual, the more deserving of exploration an idea becomes. That is natural. What is not natural is to dismiss the unusual on its face. Simply because it is unusual. That is a denial of opportunity if there ever was one. Okay, thank you. This next question is a little bit long and comes in in, uh, in various parts, so um, I'll go ahead and, and ask it, and if and if I need to, I'll follow up because um, there is multiple questions in this next one, but the, it's all of a part. Uh, would people who were are in an MK Ultra project such as Marnik be considered to be MAP also? MAP stands for Mercenary Army Program. Even though they might never have been off planet, they could have been used for violent and dark purposes here. Are those used for gray human hybrid programs likely to have been also in Monarch, meaning the Earth based program of sexual use, drug transport, assassination, and secure info transfer to politicians? If a person washed out from the violence by refusing to do it, would they be dropped completely or still used for sex, drug, transport, and information transfer?